please be seated. A special sitting to commemorate the life and service of Elvin Numerod. May it please the court. Good morning to her ladyship, Honorable Madam Justice Guilford, her ladyship, Madam Justice Charles, his lordship, Honorable Justice Glasgow, and her ladyship, Honorable Justice Atti. Good day also to all members of parliament, fellow members of cabinet, ministers of government, Mr. Christopher Nelson, Queen's Council, Director of Public Prosecution, members of the inner bar, members of the utter bar, fellow colleagues, the family and friends of the late Mr. Elvin Nimrod, members of the press and the general public. Good day to all. Firstly, I extend deep and sincere sympathies and condolences to all of the family, friends and colleagues of Mr. Elvin Nimrod. It is an offensive state that I address the court today in memory of Mr. Nimrod, on behalf of the government of Grenada, the Office of the Attorney General, and Ministry of Legal Affairs. Whilst I did not know Mr. Nimrod personally, over the last few weeks and days since his passing, I learned of the measure of the man. Mr. Nimrod, without a doubt, was a statesman and a true patriot of Grenada, Kariakou, and Petit Martinic. By profession, Mr. Nimrod was an attorney at law who worked in New York and Grenada for many years before taking on the mantle of public office. He was a member of the Senate for two years and then became an elected member of parliament for the constituency of Karakou and Piti Martinique for 19 years, retiring only in 2018. During those years, he notably served as the Minister of Legal Affairs from 1999 to 2008 and 2013 to 2018. <coughs> and from time to time, he also served as the Attorney General of Grenada. That is separate to Mr. Nimrod serving as Deputy Prime Minister of Grenada, Minister for Karakou and Pratimatic Affairs and Local Government, as the Minister of Foreign Affairs, International Trade and Labor, and as the Leader of Government Business in the Lower House of Parliament. As both an attorney at law and a politician, Mr. Nimrod touched many, many lives. And for this, his legacy is indelible in Grenadian history. Individuals who worked <coughs> with Mr. Nimrod while he was the Minister of Legal Affairs and the Attorney General have said that he was a humble and down-to-earth gentleman. His presence was always felt as he consistently took an interest in the lives of each member of his staff individually, such that people were comfortable and not hesitant to approach him personally. That humanity will endure of his legacy. Many have spoken about his commitment, have given accounts that he was hardworking, and all have consistently said he genuinely loved and cared for people, in particular, the people of Karakou and Piti Martinique and his clients whom he represented legally over the years. He was genuinely just a kind-hearted gentleman. When I look at his time in office, particularly in relation to law, there were several changes in the legal profession and significant pieces of legislation introduced during his tenure. Under Mr. Nimrod's watch, leadership and guidance, we saw the introduction of the historic Eastern Caribbean civil procedure rules. As with all changes, that transition to a new system within which civil law is now practiced was met with fierce criticism <coughs> as getting professionals to embrace change is often a great challenge. I am sure many cannot imagine not having those rules of court today. We saw him presenting to Parliament just prior to retiring from public office, the Rehabilitation of Offenders Act, 
which essentially gives individuals a second chance in life despite having a criminal conviction. There are too many initiatives, my ladies, for me to list on this occasion that Mr. Nimrod has advocated. But I want his family to know that the judicial system and people of Grenada are better off for his many years of service as the Attorney General and Minister of Legal Affairs. I am told he was true to the law and he was resolute and consistent in his dispensation of prudent counsel. I am told there were no spins with Mr. Nimrod. His oath was his bond. He was fair and he made no enemies. For him, professional adversaries did not translate to personal enemies. He would argue with you down to the wire, but at the end of the day, he would give you a clap on the back and don that charming <coughs> smile and say, let's go have a drink. Too many are now forming enemies. In my research, I noted Mr. Nimrod's exit from public office. When he steps down from public office, he spoke of the need to transition to the next generation of Grenadian leaders and that he was prepared to lead by example. He stated, and I quote, now I am very confident that I can now pass the baton, if not to an equally capable individual, perhaps to an even more capable individual. If I honestly did not think so, I would not have volunteered to step aside. Now, we see Mr. Nimrod's mentee, a female attorney at law he mentored, Honorable Minister Kendra Matron Stroot, now serving as an elected member of parliament and minister of legal affairs and minister of Karaku and Petty Martinique affairs and local government. Mr. Nimrod was clearly not a man of mere words, but a man of action. Many would likely regret they never took the opportunity to tell him how much he inspired them to dream bigger, to work harder and to go further. But I do hope many were able to let him know those things when he was alive. I hope he knew how much he was loved and admired, whether as an attorney at law or as a politician, or simply as a human being who worked every day to give off his best in his representation of the people he pledged to serve. It is often said that life is not measured by the number of years lived, but the life you lived in those years. A life of service to people and development is a most noble undertaking. Mr. Nimrod served this land, this tri-island state with distinction, with humility, and with grace. I thank him for his service <coughs> and extend gratitude to his family and loved ones for sharing him with the Grenadian people. To our dearly departed colleague, Mr. Nimrod, I elevate praise for him and ask the Almighty to accept him in his graces and grant his family and loved one comfort, solace, and fortitude during this time. May he rest in eternal peace. May it please the court. <coughs> May it please you, my lady Guilford, my lady Charles Clark, uh, Sir Justice Glasgow, my lady Acting. And on this special occasion, permit me to adopt the protocol list already established by the Honorable Attorney General. I wish, my ladies, my lad, to concur with the sentiments expressed by the learned attorney general. I, however, had the good fortune of working along with uh, our deceased brother, Elvin Nimrod. I first became aware of him when he tossed his hat into the political ring in the early 90s. As a lawyer, he did non-contentious work, chamber work, uh, was not an advocate, so I did not have any encounter with him in the courts. Get out of that arena and left it in the capable hands of his fellow uh, island folk, Mr. Clowden and Mr. Prime. A little more on that in a while. When he won the seat for Karakou in 1999, 
and thereafter became Minister of Legal Affairs and also Attorney General, I had the opportunity to work along with him. He was a gentleman, humble, down to earth, but a gentleman. He would always greet everyone with that big smile he was noted for. A smile that would disarm you, put you at ease. It was a smile, my ladies and my lord, that came from deep within. It was not fake, it was always genuine. So it was a pleasure working with him. He was a good listener, he was understanding, patient, and even when he did not agree or had different views, as the learned attorney general stated, disagree part as friends. Milady, in the period when Mr. Nimrod became attorney uh, minister and then attorney general, 1999, to 2007 was a bit of a difficult period within the legal system. Those of us who were there remember the turbulent times, so much so that the local bar, I think made history by being the first uh, bar to go on strike. There were differences. Through it all, Mr. Nimrod stayed his course. He was diplomatic about everything. Although he disagreed and had different views, he never drew swords publicly or clashed publicly. He would express his view and opinion quietly and let the chips fall where they may. <laughs> So it was easy, my ladies, my lord, to work with him during that period. We had our differences. There were many times decisions had to be made that was not popular with the government. There were decisions involving political foes and political friends when folks had different views. But never on one occasion did Mr. Nimrod express any ill feelings, any inappropriate comments. He did what he had to do and understood that professionals, the judiciary and others have to do what they have to do. So I would always remember him for that quality. A quality I think would serve many in good stead. I said, as a lawyer, Mr. Nimrod did not like the arena. His arena was more the court of public opinion, the political court. And so, my ladies, my lords, my lord, he battled with lawyers there, and in particular, our learned friend, Mr. George Prime. My ladies may not know that Mr. Prime ran against Mr. Nimrod in 2003. Mr. Nimrod was no pushed over. Mr. Prime learned the hard way. Mr. Nimrod won that election by a mere seven votes. Much to the disappointment of our colleague, Mr. Prime. That was not a lucky seven for Mr. Prime, but an unlucky seven. Mr. Prime would try again to unseat Mr. Nimrod in 2008, but Mr. Nimrod showed his political skill his competence and his political savvy in once again outwitting Mr. Prime and 
increasing the lead. So Nimrod was able to increase the lead by a hundred and something votes in, 19, uh, in, in 2003. So as we used to tease Mr. Prime during those times, it was no prime time for Kari Coop. <laughs> Mr. Noah, uh, Mr. Nimrod held the fort, held the Karaku tight so that Mr. Prime had to revert to the court that he is more competent at. He is uh, better equipped for the court of law. And so today, as my ladies know, he bestraddled both criminal courts. I don't know how he defied himself at times. So this was in part, you having Mr. Prime in your face every day is in part due to the defeat <laughs> at the hands of the venerable Elvin Nimrod. Mr. Noah, uh, Mr. Nimrod's political progress continued. When Mr. Prime left the political arena and did not contest in 2008, he sent his colleague from Carico, school teacher and musician Randolph uh, Flaherty to do battle. He to succumb to the political width and strength of Elvin, Nim Elvin Nimrod. So that Mr. Nimrod won in 2008 for four consecutive terms. He, it's a historic feat. I think it is second only in Cariku to the legendary Herbert Augustus Blaze. Herbert Augustus Blaze won that seat first in 1957 and won it continuously thereafter until 1984, all elections. Karaku was his. So that <clears throat> when Mr. Nimrod tossed his hat into the political ring in the early 90s, he did it cautiously. He first ran in 1995 as an independent. We recall those of us who were wrong, and certainly my learned Queen's Council friend, Dr. Alexis Taibchou, remembers very well that when the NDC fractured after 1990, the Karaku seat on the demise or the death of H.A. Blaze was taken up by Nicholas Rathwood, another Karakuian, who won the seat for NDC, for which my Queen's Council friend was a major player. NDC field, Joan Purcell, a stalwart Karakunian, the female who won the seat in 1990. However, Nimrod saw the titans on the horizon and he did not join a party. He ran independent and made a remarkable show. My ladies, my lad, he scored or he got 33% of the votes as an independent. And Joan Purcell narrowly won, getting 34%. He got 33 and she got 34. That was in 1995. And so the rest is history. Having flexed his political muscle as an independent running for the first time, garnering so many votes, the power brokers at the time saw that he was a force to be reckoned with. And within a matter of a year or two, he was made a senator. And by 1999, ran on the NNP ticket and won convincingly and has won that seat from then on 
to the time he bowed out of active politics in 2018. So he measures up Milady to Herbert Augustus Blaise, who has left his legacy. And uh, that remains, so is, is, is noted, the fact that we have Herbert Blaise food. I'm not sure what we'd have after Nimrod. All of Herbert Augustus Blaise won seven times and lost once. Nimrod won four times and lost once. Probably had he stayed on in the arena, he may have done better at establishing a more powerful record. Why well, dwell on that era, Milady? Because I think he would be better known and remembered for his political acumen, for his achievements as a politician. It is noteworthy that Herbert Augustus Blaise was a lawyer and politician. So Mr. Nimrod was a lawyer and a politician. And indeed, as the AG, learned AG indicated, he gave his blessings to another lawyer, politician, no doubt, to carry on the legacy, his legacy, and the legacy of the late Herbert Augustus Blaise. My ladies, my lad, through you, I wish to express our deepest condolences to his family, friends, the people of Karaku and P.T. Matnik. May he rest in peace. Thank you. Dr. Frank, would my Lord Glasgow, my lady, Yes, I too may adopt the protocol established by the Honorable Attorney General. Who we come here this morning, I think, not to mourn as people who have no cause to celebrate, but instead we have come to give thanks, really, to God for lending us health in Nimrod. And in that context, I'm happy to, to depart somewhat from the Honorable Attorney General and the Honorable Director of Public Prosecution and dwell not so much on yesterday, but to, to show that all that they have said Describe virtues that were manifest in Elvin Nimrod way back when. He was my senior at a Grenada Boys Secondary School. And that was in the 1960s. And the disarming smile was already there when I first met him. He was my senior and therefore. I cannot say I was within his circumference and such in those days in the GBSS, junior boys knew how to keep their place and I kept mine. But the design smile was already there. It was a hallmark of his. It was not something he acquired later for irrelevant purposes. I'm not saying that what the learner director of public prosecution spoke about and I don't purposes. Very relevant to the point. But my, my focus is to say that Elvin Nimrod always charmed those around him with that disarming smile way back into the 1960s in the innocent days of the Grenada Boys Secondary School. Another thing one observed about the Lima back then was that he was not a 
rowdy person, very quiet, but stood his ground for what he believed in. Quietly, tenaciously, but not self-indignatedly as it were. I'll tell you, ladies and why this is important. Elvin Nimrod came across the seas from Carrier Coop in the 1960s to the GBSS. So that was an additional reality he had to cope with because the matter of social stratification in Grenada has always been torrid. A man called M.G. Smith, a sociologist coming out of the University of California, Berkeley, had come to Grenada in the late 50s. And it struck him so much that stratification in this country was as dense as it was that he did a study and wrote a book called Social Stratification in the Media. Unmute, they want me to unmute. I don't know. Not only then would Nimrod have to contend with certain realities about him, which M.G. Smith discusses in relation to Eric Gary, but he also had that additional challenge of coming from Caracu. The Anson Gordons would tell you that coming from Caracu in those days into the GBSS was very demanding. As a matter of fact, he swears Gordon does that. The reason he attaches to me so much was that because of that reality, some boys were besetting him and I went to his rescue and they never touched him again after that. So that people like Nimrod, when they go back to the 60s and had to deal with the realities which surrounded them, required a lot of strength of character, depth of personality, and that disarming smile to get through in life. So a younger boy in the school like myself, looking up at Nimrod, was always struck by the fact that he was never making noise, but no one did push him around. No one did fool around with him. Kept that quiet smile and kept his quiet countenance, but he stood for what he believed in. Those characteristics meant a lot to us, the junior boys in the school, because we felt if an Elvin Nimrod could be that pleasant, but be that firm, maybe then in life one does not have to be loud mouth. One does not have to be coarse to make one's point. And therefore, it came to us as no surprise when later on in life, he entered politics and performed the way he did as described by the Honorable Attorney General and the Learning Director of Public Prosecutions. That was something innate to him and cultivated by him in those glorious days of the 1960s in the GBSS. I don't know of any period in my life which has ever been as exciting and enriching as those days. I've said time and again, I referred to Sir Lawrence Joseph. You know I am a felony mark? No, we would observe certain similarities between the two. Because in those days, for a person like Sir Lawrence Joseph to be teaching in the GPSS, 
meant a lot to us, the younger guys, coming not out of St. George City, whose boys had certain views on life. So people like Kelvin Nimrod and Lawrence Joseph played a major role in shaping the outlook on life of younger people coming from out of the St. George's area. I think it was the Honorable Attorney General who maybe the Director of Public Prosecution referred to the strike of 1995. I'm going to it too because I want to make a certain point. I was called upon to go with Mr. Robert Ferguson to attend a certain meeting. And it was the responsibility of Robert Ferguson and myself to counteract the view of the Attorney General at the time, Minister of Legal Affairs, Elvin Nimrod. The records will show that we prevailed, Douglas and I, over the view being put forward by Elvin Nimrod. And never one minute thereafter did Mr. Nimrod show in way, shape, or form that he held that against me, certainly. Never. It was business as usual thereafter. In fact, when he was going to be setting up the Constitution and Review Commission, he wrote me a very glowing letter asking me to serve. That was the metal of the man. He bore no malice to anyone. If you were in a contest with him, I suspect as long as you behaved properly yourself, he too, in turn, never held it against him. So then, speaking for myself, as a product of the school, times of Elvin Nimrod, I owe a deep gratitude to him for having shown me, even way back in the 60s in the GBSS, that you can make your point without being miserable. You can be strong and yet be pleasant to all around you. And I want to say to his family that he may have gone, but the impact he left on us, the younger boys at the GBSS, in a decade of the 1960s, will never, ever go away. And we pray that God let Elvin Lindrod rest in peace. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. May it please, my lord and my ladies, I have the honor today to speak on behalf of the Grenada Bar Association to pay, no doubt, glowing tribute to our dear colleague and departed friend, Elvin Nimrod, an outstanding statesman, a genuine and hardworking patriot, the longest serving Minister of Foreign Affairs in this country, and arguably the longest serving Minister of Legal Affairs. Elvin Nimrod has given yeoman service, as alluded to by previous speakers, to Grenada as a member of parliament, a minister of government, and as attorney general. He has held various ministerial portfolios, and I wouldn't go into that 
um, save and accept to mention what has not been mentioned before, that he's also a 1990s graduate of the Hugh Within Law School six month program, having qualified to practice law at the New York Bar before returning to Grenada. And together with his wife, Donzel Tucker Nimrod, also a personal friend who studied at the Hugh Within Law School in the 1990s, they set up practice in Grenada before he entered active politics. Elvin Nimrod was a simple, humble, gentle, and genuine human being who never allowed professional and political differences to affect his personal relationship. Throughout, he remained loyal to constituency, country, and party, true to his own conscience. Yet, most importantly, my lady and my lords, he exemplified what I often describe as a true and unique Grenadian spirit, not very common in politics, in the politics of our Caribbean neighbors. It's a quality I always boast of and hope that we in Grenada never lose that quality. And that is though he vigorously supported and promoted his party and battled passionately with his opponents in the rough and tumble of adversarial politics, he still managed to embrace all, maturely separating professional, political, and personal relationship. And who better person to speak of that than myself? We battled it out publicly on many occasions, including the famous protests um, of 2005, alluded to himself as Attorney General and myself then as President of the Grenada Bar Association. And uh, in February 2005, for the younger ones who are not aware, in February 2005, exactly February 1st, 2005, the Grenada Bar Association boycotted all the courts of this country for one month and not just boycotted the courts of this country, but took to the streets. I can see, still see the image of my um, sister and friend Celia and others on the street across the Carnage in protest of a certain appointment to the position of Attorney General um, of this country, to which the bar strongly felt was not a fit and proper person to occupy that position. So it was a stormy February 2005. Almost every single day, apart from the protests, uh, public statements being hurled across um, the table on the various media houses. And Elvin Nimrod was attorney general. I had alluded to in an earlier statement that we had a meeting with the then learned attorney general in an effort to seek to resolve the issue amicably. And I remember leading the delegation of the Grenada Bar Association then, and among the delegation, there were about six or seven of us. And uh, when uh, we entered the room, we entered the room, that's more than after, more than two weeks of protests. Uh, we greeted each other warmly, in fact, with a warm embrace. And we spoke uh, before the meeting, uh, very amicably, and uh, members of our delegation, in fact, expressed surprise that 
A.G. Nimrod and myself were actually on speaking terms. We ended that meeting without a resolution. And we left that meeting again in very good spirits, in a very amicable way, and promising to continue the discussions in an effort to resolve the matter. And that is what I always advocate among our colleagues, among our politicians, that we focus on issues, we battle it out rigorously and passionately, but never let it be reduced to personal attacks on each other. We focus on the issues and not the personalities. I can also give the example again, two years later, in October 2007, when the bar was reliably informed of a tuberculosis outbreak in the Richmond Hill prisons. I quietly made certain phone calls in an effort to deal with the matter and to avoid exciting any public issues and public emotions. My phone calls to various persons in health did not work. We wrote letters that did not work. And of course, we were in the middle of the assizes and we issued a public statement. And again, my brother Nimrod and myself were locked in a public battle for many days. In fact, in one week, I recall the state held three press conferences because they felt at the time that an issue of tuberculosis out in the public domain can affect Grenada in several ways. Notwithstanding, we eventually resolved the issue. And I remember a certain judge who was sitting at the time, whose sister was also a doctor, based on the evidence we presented uh, locally reliable evidence and her reading of that evidence and consulting her sister, um, she also was deeply concerned about the matter, but eventually it was amicably resolved. A third instance I can also refer to is the passage of the Legal Profession Act in Grenada when he, um, A.G. Nimrod, went on public radio and television to indicate that the bar was against the passage of the Legal Profession Act. He said it publicly, and of course, I had to respond then as president of the bar and the, the, um, sent over to him the numerous items of correspondence, both from the OECS Bar Association and the Grenada Bar Association, urging the state to pass a legal profession act. That was the policy then of the OECS bar and the policy of the Grenada Bar Association. Presented with the evidence, he quickly withdrew his statements and that matter was amicably resolved. Fast forward to 2015 and during a brief stint then as president of the bar between 2014 and 2016, I remember the chief justice, or chief justice called me one evening to indicate that a certain country, um, one of the more developed countries was unable to embark on the Jewish project. And uh, therefore, at the last minute, she was um, trying to urge that Grenada uh, accept the proposal at very short notice, in fact, within days, to um, take it over from that particular country. And uh, I, my first call was to then Minister of Legal Affairs, Elvin Nimrod. And I explained the importance of it as I saw it and urged that the state put the requisite measures in place, including accommodation for judges, 
uh, transport, which the local the um, local uh, country authorities was responsible for, and uh, um, uh, security and such. And after listening intently, he immediately said, we cannot lose this opportunity. And true to his word, he ensured that the Juris Project at very short notice could have been implemented in Grenada. And that is the measure of the man as alluded to earlier on, once you have persuaded him and he is on board, he was true to his word. And it was that Juris Project Sometime between 2015, it went on for longer than planned, but 2015 and 2017, I believe, that we were able to reduce the backlog of 175 cases. We were able to dispose of 165 of those cases, 10 short, through mediation, and what needed to go to trial went to trial. And uh, Elvin Nimrod, despite not necessarily operating full time, and we see his ministerial portfolios at the Ministry of Legal Affairs, he ensured that it was done. <clears throat> Brother Nimrod never allowed the giddiness of power to fly to his head notwithstanding all his political and other achievements, including holding the portfolio of deputy prime minister and acting as prime minister on several occasions. He was able to dine with kings in his capacity as minister of foreign affairs and yet sit humbly and connected easily with his constituents of Harvey Vale and other areas in Karakou in his capacity as parliamentary representative, eating, drinking, and enjoying light moments. Always with a ready smile and pleasant demeanor, Brother Nimrod remained respectful, personable, approachable, accommodating, engaging, down to earth, and rooted especially with his constituents of Karakou and Piti Martinique. We extend on behalf of the Grenada Bar Association deepest condolences to his family, entire family, and especially our colleague Donzel Tucker Nimrod in this difficult time. Yeah, well, my brother, you have served humanity well. Rest in peace, colleague and friend. May it please, my Lord. Thank you, Mr. Professor. I'm not sure if you're hearing me because we're in another room. Yes. Thank you, Justice Guilford. Um, I seek your indulgence to adopt the protocol previously established. I have listened to uh, all the speakers before, and I would say that I can contradict none of the accolades that have been poured out for a dearly departed colleague, Elvin Nimrod. I speak with a particular memory of my association with him during the years I served at the Ministry of Legal Affairs in Grenada from 2006 to 2008. And during that period, Mr. Nimrod, as has been established, was the Minister of Legal, Legal Affairs and the Minister of Foreign Affairs and also serving as Attorney General. What struck me about Mr. Nimrod 
is was was his incredible and remarkable humility. I've served in that office, not only in Grenada, but in other jurisdictions. And I can tell you, he was the only minister of legal affairs who left his office and come down to my office, not on one occasion, but on many occasions to meet with me to discuss the issues affecting the office. Such was the measure of the man. He was never ruffled. I never saw him upset. And we spoke. I could remember his formid formidability about his position. Never loud, never raucous, never abrasive, never pulling rank, like some would say. He was always attentive. He was always open to ideas. He always gave you the ability to run with those ideas. In particular, I remember when we started, the Attorney General's chambers had been located in the basement of the Governor General's office because of the Ivan devastation. And we then moved to the end of the carnage across from the restaurant, I believe it is. And Minister Nimrod and I had several discussions about the accommodations, the work of the office, populating the office, and all these discourses. I could remember his acuity of mind, his humility, and that formidability. He was always respectful, and he always gave you the ability to run with whatever ideas he concurred in. The measure of a man, as they say, is not in only what he says, but what he does. And he lived and walked that humility. There wasn't a the time I could pick up the phone and call his secretary and said I needed to con confer with him. And he was not always willing to meet and, and, and have a discussion with me. Today we celebrate his life. And again, I join with the other speakers in thanking his family for allowing him the capacity and the ability and the space and the time to serve his country with distinction and with humility. May God give him, give his soul peace. Thank you, Mr. Jasso. Thank you, Mr. Honorable judges, honorable members of parliament, honorable members of cabinet, honorable attorney general, honorable director of public prosecutions, Christopher Nelson, police counsel, Dr. Francis Alexis, police counsel, members of the inner bar, members of the upper bar, registrar and staff of the registry, Family and friends of the late Elvin Nimrod and members of the league. The late Elvin Nimrod died on the sixth day of February 2021. He was a lawyer by profession of politics and his love of his country and countrymen saw him dedicating most of his life to these areas. Someone described him as, and I'm quoting, a true champion of the people of Karyaku as was demonstrated in his unblemished feat. In 2000, he founded the Ministry of Karakou and Kitty Martinique Affairs, which today remains the only constituency in the country for the ministry. During his tenure, he delivered several new and state-of-the-art facilities such as the Fish Center, School Resource Center, Dare Care Center, Health Center, Tourism Welcome Center, Vendors Market, Bus Terminus, and the desalination plants on both islands, the airport, together with several other facilities and institutions are also upgraded. He constructed the Lauriston Mini Stadium, which in 2011 
hosted a Windward Islands cricket match between St. Vincent and, 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 and Grenada in the fort. He, he also served in many capacities, including Deputy Prime Minister and Attorney General. His ministerial portfolios included legal affairs, local government, Caribou and Martinique affairs, foreign affairs, and international trade. These are just some contributions and feats accomplished by such a great man during his lifetime. I have heard these speakers speak of the outstanding qualities of the elder Nimrod. His life speaks of what service and dedication to Grenada, Carioku, and Petit Marty, and its people. The late Elvin Nimrod had a winsome smile, and this is my observation of the man in the few times I had the opportunity of interacting with him. And this is what I've heard many of the speakers highlighting as well. And an affable personality. He was easy to speak to and always made you feel comfortable. He was down to earth and unpretentious with a welcoming voice. I guess it was because of these qualities, it is said, he was much loved by the people of Cariacu and Peter Martinique and I knew of Grenada as well. He has transitioned to a better place. He has gone to be with, be with the Lord. All of Grenada, Cariacu and Petit Martinique will remember him for a life well lived and his many contributions to this country. In parting, I leave with you the family, friends, and those who worked with the late Elgin Nimrod over the years, these few words from 2 Timothy 4, 17. Whenever you sit to remember your loved one, the late Elgin Nimrod, and I told you, I have fought a good fight. I have finished the race. I have kept the feet. Henceforth, there is laid up for me the crown of righteousness which the Lord, the righteous judge, will award to me on that day. And not only to me, but also to all who have loved his appearance and his hope. This simply means that there is no right way to go on this journey of peace. We can only go about this in our own way, with the help of our loved ones and God's assistance. I hope you will hold these few words and thoughts close to your heart. As time will heal your pain and wipe away your tears. On behalf of the Honorable Chief Justice, Dame Janice Pereira, and the Eastern Caribbean Supreme Court, and my colleagues and I, I extend heartfelt condolences to the family, friends, and the government and people of Grenada, Cariacu, and Pitu Martin, and the passing of a much loved son. Sorry. Sleep on, good soul. Thank you. And please.